What is Chris up to? Well, let's find out. I want to get some cover crop put on. Oats that I planted, cover crop oats, which are just oats that I don't plan on harvesting. Just putting them down to help the soil. And I thought to myself, what am I going to pull a spreader with? I thought about Herman. He's hooked to a disc. And then I thought, well, I've already washed the 1650, but I can wash it again. And I've since bought gas, so it can do it. It won't leave a lot for tracks. And then I plan on disking the whole field after I get done uh, shaking on some oats because, well, I'm shooting into the sun now. Because my cousin's been knifing in manure in that field. I've got some of it disked down. He's put some more manure down. So it needs a good disking to smooth things out. And I thought, well, rather than drilling them in, which I usually do, it's probably a lot more um, accurate or, uh, I don't know, better response, less wasted seed. But I thought, shoot, I can just shake them on with this and then uh, disk it and the majority of them should grow. We're getting kind of dry here. Haven't had a lot of rain in the last three weeks or so. And I did some, I got on the internet machine. Oats are about 26 pounds per cubic foot. That ain't on this chart, but 50 is, which is, you know, twice of what, 26. I want to put on probably about 100 pounds an acre. I got enough for that. Might as well use it up. So that's somewhere around, let's see, 193 at three and a half inches. But I'm actually half that because I'm only 25 pounds per cubic foot. So that would be great. A little under 100, which is fine. And then I also figured they're not going to throw as far because they're lighter than fertilizer. So instead of a 40 foot spread pattern, probably going to be 30, which is about 75%. So that gets me back to putting on more like 75 pounds an acre. I'm sorry, 75. Yeah. So anyways, let's see. So that's something more like, uh, probably around the two and a half to three range. Right in there. I guess we'll find out what's the worst that'll happen. Here's the oats. They are in the big old green Kilbros wagon. The 97.95 did a nice job on them. Now oh, there's some mud speckles on the window there but I'll just uh, come in with a skid steer put the bucket under there fill the scoop up dump it in the spreader load the spreader up and we can go at it
wonder if that auger could put the oats in there. the 4225 right now but I thought I'd go over a little bit on this 1650 Terra tire there were some questions in the last video and um, I got some pictures and stuff from when I restored it I thought I'd throw them in here while you watch it zoom across the field um, let's see the original tires that was one of the questions here's a picture of the day I came home with I'm quite sure these were the original tires they were definitely original rims and um, I've never seen so many plugs jammed into a tire in one spot. I mean, they just grab a handful and poke them in there to get a tire fixed or get it leak from leaking. Then when I finally, I, part of me really wanted to keep those original tires in the picture. They don't look that bad, but when you got close, they were really weather checked. There was all those holes that have been plugged. Like it is just not worth risking a flat for those they had a lot of tread left on them so when it come time to break them down I could see why they were poking plugs in them because I could not get them I off the bead I tried with the skid steer then I tried to backhoe pushing down on the bead on those and it wasn't until I finally took a hole saw cut a hole just above the bead then went in with a torch and torched off the steel bands inside the bead and when that last steel band popped then it released from the rim but i just did not matter what i did those that tire and that rim were determined to be one forever so they were definitely ruined by the time i was done with them and they have since gone to tire heaven and been recycled somehow or another there was a local uh, tire scrap drive and they were needing a few more to fill the truck or they had to pay for it so away they went But one of the things they did, I think when they switched it to the Alice Chalmers 220, should have a picture of that, is they added a second hub on the axle. It had to have been on the 220 because the 1650 did not have enough axle sticking out there to put two hubs on, especially the spacing they had it. But they uh, welded a bunch of plates on to meet up to a second hub on the axle. I'm guessing they figured that would uh, make it less likely to break axles, less axle stress. Um, I'm not sure how that would work. A 220 should be big enough to handle the stress of a Terra tire. 
depending on how much they're bouncing around and how much weight they have on the back. 1650, I'm sure, would be a smaller diameter axle. But one way or another, they had all these just pieces of flat steel, like half inch flat steel. They must have put the hub on the axle and then mounted, you know, cut drill a hole in this uh, piece of steel and then mount it in there and then weld it on. And then that way they knew it was centered up, but it was a hodgepodge. It just, uh, it looked terrible. And I was not gonna put it back that way. So me and the acetylene torch spent a lot of time leaned over into the side of that rim, or both rims, cutting those extra tabs out to get it back to original and not so goofy looking. I'm pretty sure I've got a picture of that. There's still a ring mark on the floor of my shop where I was torching all those and all the sparks and slag and stuff were going down on the concrete and there was enough. It discolored it a little bit in a ring shape. Just a lot of work. Then of course, you know, I had to grind, get it smooth, looking good. And then one other thing that told me they were the original rims is when Oliver will use these adapters to go from the uh, the nine bolt hub, which is actually now a nine plus four, that's 13. Um, they added the, the larger bolts on there. Those larger bolt heads are so close to the next bolt circle on, on the rim that if the flat wasn't facing the lip of the rim, you couldn't get them on if the point was facing out. Now, like when I did Herman, I knew of this already. And so when I put the wheels back on them, I was putting new bolts in and I made sure that the flat side was to the outside and not the point. And they went on just fine. Now the 1650, they must have gotten their adapter plate on and, and then went to put the wheel on the adapter plate and the bolt heads were hitting. And so rather than retorquing them or trying to adjust them, they torched the rim. And, uh, but to me, that ended up, that was showed uh, provenance. It showed that these were the right rims because that was a reason for cutting that just a little notch by each oversized bolt that was on the Oliver hub. That little bit would uh, give it what the clearance it needed. And so I thought about having my brother who was a welding engineer weld them gaps up and fill it. But I thought, you know, that tells a story. That tells some of the history of this. So I left the notches there. That told me, yep, these are the right rims. So that's the story behind those little notches there. And one other thing I found was, um, and it must have been an update, because some of them didn't have them. I don't think Herman did when I first got them. But the book, I think that one of the later books showed a uh, jam nut on the backside of the studs for the adapter plate. And that made sense to me, because there was really, the studs just threaded into the adapter plate. And so they could come loose. The, the lug nut could come loose. So by having that jam nut on the back side, you kind of, you pulled the threads tight inside the house or inside the adapter plate and also gave it more surface area on the back side to keep it from pulling through, coming loose. So I got a bunch of half or um, what are those studs? Three quarter, I think they're three quarter inch studs. Bunch of three quarter inch jam, fine threaded jam nuts, which actually I had some on hand. And, um, put them all around the back side there. I'm pretty sure I got pictures, at least from Herman, of his jam nuts. Because I'm pretty sure, I'm quite confident that Herman's owners had trouble with uh, those adapter studs coming loose. And, um, oh, the right fender is tweaked pretty good, the fender tank. And I tried straightening it out and there's so much steel in that, I, I finally just shimmed it instead. And then there was, oh, the right wheel is also tire. Right, right tire is, looks like it's slightly newer than the left tire. So I'm thinking when that went, it probably damaged the tire and they had to replace that. Damaged the fender when it broke off and hit the hub or come around and tweaked that some, but they lived with that. And I just couldn't stand that look. Eventually shimmed it. It was just some flat washers under the mounting bolts. And that definitely took care of the appearance problem. 
And uh, let's see, another question was about the front rims. I did track down the original front rims. They were still on the Alice 220. Um, the guy, I bought the adapter rings off of them. I think I mentioned that in the previous 16 video, 1650 video. But uh, he was willing to sell the original rim, front rims off the Alice. But the Alice uses, I think, a rock, well axle rockford but one one way or another it had a whole different bolt circle and bolt pattern so that rim had already been molested it had the center cut out and new one welded in so kind of lost some of its originality there because i was going to have to do the same i already had a center and i already had rims and so i decided to go with what i had and especially uh save a few bucks and some time he was gonna have to get them off the tractor and get other wheels to put on the tractor the tires were worthless they were as bald as a baby's butt i do believe this is the first time i've used the pto other than on the dyno for the 1650 terra tire since i restored it it worked really good comes to a stop when i disengage it works when it's on Although the soft plug on the one side seeps just a little bit, and that figures, you know, it's all painted, so I'll probably just wash the little bit of oil off and call it good. Only seems to leak when you're using a PTO. I won't be doing that at shows much, maybe.